Professional wrestling is a business full of egos, backstage politics, and at times, utter degeneracy. The world of meaty men slapping each other exists to tell stories, get positive messages across. Moments like Daniel Bryan winning at WrestleMania, Punk in Chicago, Eddie beating Brock. But the thing is, those are characters and playing those characters are real people. And sometimes the people playing these wrestlers and characters that we see on our TV screens, true colors are shown. In today's video, we're going to go over three wrestlers who have gained distinct reputations within the wrestling world for various reasons. Obviously, there are a lot more than three degenerate wrestlers out there to talk about. So if you wanna see another video like this, like the video and subscribe right this second. Okay now, let's begin. Sexy Star is a Mexican women's wrestler who has been an active wrestler since 2006. For just under the first decade of her career, Sexy Star would only ever really wrestle in Mexico, wrestling mainly for AAA, the top promotion in Mexico, where she would become one of their most successful women stars in the history of the company. But in 2014, Lucha Underground would launch, a wrestling show that was portrayed as an episodic and lineal drama taking place in an underground Lucha Libre league. The show was filmed in Los Angeles, California and aired on the El Rey network across all the states. With that came the hiring of many Mexican wrestlers, including Sexy Star, who would get her first exposure to an American audience. And Sexy Star was a quick hit in Lucha Underground. Lucha Underground allowed intergender wrestling, and this worked to Sexy Star's advantage, and she quickly became one of Lucha Underground's most popular wrestlers. Sexy Star reached her peak in Lucha Underground on Season 3's Aztec Warfare match, where she defeated 19 other wrestlers in a rumble to win the Lucha Underground Championship, the top prize in the company. And while she would lose the title on the next episode, the fact she won it in the first place showed that she was a big enough star to be put in that position. But what happened next? Where was she like a year from this point after winning the, the world title? Surely this is just the start for Sexy Star now. She was blacklisted from wrestling. A year from this point, she was blacklisted from wrestling. After winning the title and hitting the peak of her career, she was blacklisted. So how did this happen? Ah oh yes, the Rosemary Incident. On July 16th, 2017, Sexy Star made a surprising return to AAA, winning their women's title. She'd been away for a while whilst working Lucha Underground, and her first defense would take place at the following month's Triple Mania event, which is AAA's biggest event of the year. She would defend the title in a four-way match against Hamada, Lady Shani, and Rosemary. In this match, she would retain the title after making Rosemary tap out to an armbar, and then she wouldn't let go of the armbar. The bell is ringing, and she still hasn't let go of the armbar. And eventually, she does let go, but we all know what we just watched. We just witnessed Sexy Star lock in a real-life armbar on Rosemary and refuse to let go. The wrestling world was set ablaze by this moment, and Sexy Star was effectively blacklisted from wrestling almost immediately, with wrestlers taking to Twitter to criticize her, most notably Cody Rhodes, who was seemingly working every single wrestling company at that time, stating that he will never share a locker room with Sexy Star. Since then, Sexy Star has never wrestled for a major company again. She never reappeared for Lucha Underground, and her name has now been given to a different wrestler in AAA, who is now going under Sexy Star. The Hart Family is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, and most successful wrestling dynasties of all time. Bret Hart, Jim the Anvil, the British Bulldog, Natalia, and of course, Teddy Hart. Teddy Hart is the outcast of the Hart family, and for reasons I'm about to explain, hopefully you'll be able to understand why. After graduating the Hart Dungeon in 1998, Teddy Hart became the youngest wrestler to ever be signed to a WWF developmental contract at just 18 years old. He was sent to go train with Dory Funk Jr., however after four years, he was cut loose, never making a major appearance for the company. He was released for what was perceived to be attitude problems, and this was about to become a very common theme in his career. 
Despite being released from WWE, Teddy Hart's career was far from over. In 2003, he would begin making appearances for Ring of Honor and TNA. However, he was gone from these companies even quicker than he was gone from the WWE. On November 1st, 2003, Hart competed in a scramble match at a Ring of Honor event in Elizabeth, New Jersey. After losing the match, he then began just doing flips and moonsaults off the top of the cage onto the other wrestlers. Over and over again. He just kept climbing the cage and jumping onto the other wrestlers. It was a mad thing to watch. He did it so many times to the point he ended up throwing up at ringside and his actions annoyed the other wrestlers as he was not meant to be in the match and having to just constantly catch this guy who keeps jumping off the cage without anyone's permission is kind of just annoying, just being a complete delinquent. After this, Teddy Hart would only wrestle two more matches with Ring of Honor ever, once in 2004 and a one match return in 2009. And it was also because of this moment that Teddy would not last much longer in TNA. He would only wrestle a couple matches for TNA before, get this, getting into an altercation with CM Punk. Some things never change. The altercation came about due to his actions at the Elizabeth show, meaning in just the first four years of his career, Teddy Hart has already been blacklisted from the top three promotions in the country. For the next few years, Teddy Hart would be hired and fired by Jersey All Pro Wrestling, AAA. He would make a sensational return to the WWE, where he'd unfortunately get released before making it to the main roster, but seemingly not for disciplinary issues this time round, so fair enough. And he would also appear in Wrestling Society X, which is perhaps the biggest promotion that he had a proper run with and was never technically fired from. The show was cancelled, he was never released for attitude problems. That and MLW. He returned to MLW in 2017 where he was middleweight champion and part of the New Heart Foundation with Davey Boy Smith Jr. and Brian Pillman Jr. However, he was released from the company in 2019 for, yep, you guessed it, disciplinary issues. Since then, Teddy Hart has not been active much in wrestling, having not wrestled since 2020. That's his wrestling career, but we haven't even hit the tip of the iceberg with Teddy Hart. We still have all of his legal issues to cover. Before we go any further though, we are going to give a quick content warning to say we're about to be discussing topics such as sexual assault and abuse. You can use the timestamps to skip forward past this part if you do wish. On December 3rd, 2014, Hart was announced as wanted by the Royal Canadian Mountain Police on sexual assault charges including two women, a case that was dropped in June of 2016. In January 2017, he was arrested for a DUI, evading arrest, and auto theft. These charges were dropped later. In February 2020, he was arrested in Virginia on drug possession, and then a month later, he was arrested in Virginia for violating his bail conditions. That same month, he was arrested in Virginia for a third time after allegedly assaulting his wrestler and girlfriend at the time, Maria Manic, assaulting her at the home of wrestler Ace Montana, who called the police, with Montana claiming he had to point a gun at Hart to get him away from Manic. It was this story that finally drove Hart out of wrestling. He has only wrestled one event since this, that being a Juggalo Championship wrestling event in December 2020, but nothing other than that. He has effectively been blacklisted. And yes, in case you're wondering, he did have more legal troubles. In October 2020, he was charged with injuring a disabled person, evading arrest, and drug possession. And he was arrested for these exact same charges in March 2021 once again in, you guessed it, Virginia. Joey Ryan began wrestling across the Southern California scene in the year 2000. It was very early days for his career and he would only wrestle for small indies in his first few years. He would find his footing though when he would help to co-found Pro Wrestling Gorilla, a Southern Californian wrestling promotion which would go on to become the premier indie wrestling company in America. 
And while Joey would have fair success in PWG, being a former world champion, Battle of Los Angeles winner, and also having other stints in other larger wrestling companies such as Ring of Honor and TNA many years later, Joey Ryan's career was fairly stagnant after more than a decade of wrestling, and he still hadn't got his big break, and at this point in his career, it was maybe too late. So the next best thing Joey could really do is reinvent himself and revive his stagnant career on the independent scene. And it was then that Joey Ryan would undergo a major change in his character and becoming one of the most polarizing figures in all of wrestling. In 2015, Joey Ryan traveled to Japan to wrestle for DDT, a promotion that has a large focus on comedy wrestling and just being generally silly. During Joey's match, there was a moment where he used his private area to suplex and overpower his opponent. This moment would go viral and would obviously bring out a lot of people's opinions on what wrestling should be. And from this, sexualized moves and action would become a part of Joey Ryan's wrestling repertoire. He would do these moves to male wrestlers, women wrestlers, fans in attendance, retired legends of wrestling. Joey Ryan's new style of wrestling essentially saw him become one of the most polarizing figures in wrestling, with many people involved in wrestling seeing him as a joke, particularly Jim Cornette whom Joey engaged in a very public feud with for many years, resulting in many long and jarring Twitter feuds between the two. Joey Ryan's wrestling style really did cause a huge divide in wrestling fans, with fans arguing that this is what wrestling shouldn't be, and other fans arguing that wrestling really can be anything. But in the end, the people who defended his wrestling style and gimmick would come to regret it, myself included. And once again, a quick content warning as we're about to discuss themes such as sexual abuse and assault. In June of 2020, Joey Ryan was named in the Speaking Out movement, a movement dedicated to exposing abusers, offenders, and all-round wrongens in the wrestling industry. And at least 17 women would speak out about Joey Ryan accusing him of sexual assault and harassment. These claims by the women were backed up by other wrestlers such as Joey Janela and Ryan Nemeth, both whom have worked with him, with Ryan Nemeth having lived with the guy. Joey Ryan posted a lengthy statement on Twitter denying any wrongdoing and would also post an over hour long video to his YouTube channel once again defending himself from every allegation. But by this point, his contract with Impact had been terminated, his promotion was shut down, and his wrestling career was rightfully put to a halt. And other than a failed return in March of 2021, Joey Ryan has not been involved in wrestling whatsoever, and he probably never will be. So that right there was me discussing three degenerates who have been involved in wrestling. But we haven't even hit the tip of the iceberg when it comes to talking about these kinds of people. So if you would like to see another video like this, then let me know in the comments down below. And by showing some support to the channel, by liking this video and subscribing. I'll see you all soon. Goodbye. And as always, take care, keep on rolling, and feel free to stay positive.